Hello awesome people. I hope you're having a great day today. Today we're taking a look at the uh, the Shores of Death. It is the third and final novel in this collection of roads uh, between the worlds of three science fiction novels by Michael Moorcock for you folks. Uh, the last one is about 130 pages long. I knocked it out in three days. I did 50 pages the first day. Uh, and then the next day I did 45 to finish a couple chapters. And then the final day I did just did 35 and so forth to finish it. Knocked it out pretty quickly uh, for you folks. And I blew, I blew through it uh, very, 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 very nicely for you folks. And knocked it out the third and final book in this collection for you folks. It's in the Eternal Champion series the collection. I'll link you to it uh, in the comments below. But it, it's really some of the sci fi ones. Uh, don't feel uh, like they're in it. Basically, what's happening in this is our point of view character uh, is somebody who is inbred and he's born in the twilight zones of Earth in the far future. His uh, uh, his father is his actual father. His mother is his sister uh, because she's the daughter of him, so he was inbred. Uh, and he is, his dad dies when he's 12. His dad didn't like him. He preferred it because of, because of his daughter and sister died. Uh, and... Uh, 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 very early uh, on in order, order to take care of the child so he didn't like him uh, and so forth so he didn't really care for him or take care of him or anything like that so when he dies at 12 uh, our, our our lead protagonist point of view character sees this as an opportunity to go and join the rest of the world in, in the light side of the earth uh, and so because it's stopped rotating and they're on the twilight dark side uh, so he's, he heads on over he's raised by somebody there um, he is seen as like this bright, new, shining uh, star. He becomes a, an officer and is in the city councilman and some other stuff. Um, he's considered this strong, ethical, great guy uh, and so forth. Uh, and then about two or three chapters into to the novel, we're going to find out uh, that all of the people in the world in this far future Earth um, are no longer able to have children because of radiation uh, sickness against them so nobody's able to have children and they checked out in the twilight nobody's living out in the twilight anymore our point of view character was the last guy who was born in the twilight era uh, and then also this was true uh, for the other earth colonies in the solar system like ganymede and mars but not titan i think there might still be people out of titan so they're going to mount an expedition to titan uh, to go find out what's happening and maybe bring those people back and so forth so that's what's been happening um they're now living more than 200 years so uh, with you know various life uh, lengthening and good medicine, medical practices and so forth uh, and comfortable healthy living uh, and that sort of a thing uh, so that they are are live live long uh and so forth so they got a long time to live a couple centuries for many of them uh before they wind up dying uh and so forth uh, so that's about three or four chapters into the book so i'll leave you there what happens who was on titan uh and so forth we'll figure that out later for your folks uh, so, but that's but that's the key of what's happening uh for folks uh to get you started uh Again, I keep my review spoiler free, so I won't, I won't do a deep dive into it for you folks. Uh, the Eternal Champion series, which again, this is, a, is it's in the, a collection of that, uh, is about various planes of existence in the multiverse. A word that was created by Michael Moorcock, uh, and this Eternal Champion series is the first met, uh, multiversal war uh, in fiction. Uh, and so, on different planes of existence, so there's this law between law versus chaos in uh, the primary champion only isn't an aspect of each of these planes of a slightly different aspect of them uh, and fights a good fight for law against chaos uh, and it doesn't feel like there's a lot of fighting that's happening here with our, our point of view character he's certainly a politician he's a good guy uh, and so forth but he's not like really a fighter if you will uh, in that sense so he's not really fighting uh, the good fight although he is definitely pushing for some good resolution when things start to go dark uh, a few chapters in uh, but there we are so that's what's happening and then that's also the universe now. so that's why i think going back and rereading these things is really fun because of how influential this stuff is on modern stuff like you're watching movies or, or or fantasy books or science fiction books right in this case uh and so forth i think how influential michael moorcock has been even he, he he even heavily influenced the first dungeons and dragons role-playing game 
which is a fantasy role playing game, started in the 70s and 1979 uh, in a Dungeon Master's Guide and Appendix. And the co founder of the game, Gary Gygax, lists Michael Moorcock uh, as one of the key uh, inspirations for where he got a lot of these ideas from. Uh, and Law vs. Chaos, as the, as the denominating uh, uh, aspect, is very, very influential later on. After this stuff, so he's heavily influential in, in modern stuff. You can't read, you can't read or or see modern media or play uh, an RPG without you know running in, running into Michael Moorcock's ideas uh, for you folks. Um, as a reminder, the the chapter of this title uh, is uh, the name. I'm sorry, the chapter of this title. The name of this. Uh, this video uh, is the worst thing about new books. A quote by a French philosopher, Jacques Joubert, who said that the worst thing about new books was that they kept you from reading the old books. In a book like this, that was published decades ago. It's definitely an older work that we sometimes have forgotten about. So I like to go back here and find a lot of these classics and things that haven't been read or discussed recently. Oh, I'm bringing back to light. Michael Moorcock used to be my favorite author. Uh, in starting in about the the third third my first my second year in high school. I came across uh, his his Dorian Hockman four book series uh, that's set in the future in Earth uh, after a, a post apocalyptic thing and it's more science fantasy than science fiction or fantasy. Uh, stars the Hockman's four book series loved it and he became my favorite writer. I did a deep dive into it was a Championship. So I had to pick up this collection when I was in high school. Knocked it out then uh, because it was in that section. I remember liking it, uh, but not really liking it that much. Like the like like the uh, like the Corum stuff that we've gone back and reread a couple of weeks ago, uh, or the um, you know the Elric of Melanimity, which is what put him on the map in a major way for a lot of people. And it's definitely his most remembered character, and it's Sword Stormbringer. So there you are. Um, so I like that stuff. It's fun. Uh, and he was my favorite author, you know, for, and I read this, but I didn't think that this stuff was that great. So I'm going back and rereading and I agree with my thoughts back then. It's probably more like a seven out of 10. I've given some eights and some 8.5. So some of his things are their classic works and that were heavily read and heavily influential on modern stuff. But this one's less. So, but I like it. I thought it was good. Right. Uh, so anyway, uh, go ahead and leave it to it. I'm, so have you read this? If so, what did you think about it? Let's talk about the comments below. If you want to talk about the ending or if it's spoilers, that sort of thing, let's talk about that too. If you enjoy this, why not hit that subscribe button? There's going to be a lot more to follow. And then finally, I just want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and investing it and watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives, and we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling, and I appreciate it. So thanks again, and have an amazing day.